Hey guys, and welcome on in to another episode of Getting Wild with Terry and Friends, NHL Trends and Betting Picks. I'm Terry, ready to break down today's slate. Uh, a ton of games to talk about today. Uh, some pretty good uh, matchups here, so we will uh, get into that. Uh, but first, we will take a look at what happened yesterday uh, in the NHL. And um, only two plays, or sorry, only one play for me yesterday on the show, uh, which was uh, Washington Capitals money line. Uh, plus 120. A nice 5-1? Uh, 5-1? Five, 5-1 one? Five, one? Five, one win for the um, Washington Capitals here. Um, and we'll take a look here at the standings in a bit, but uh, that was a, a big win uh, for the Caps. Sorry, 5-2. Five, 5-2 two. Five, two win. Uh, Ovechkin, uh, two goals in that game. A big win uh, for the Capitals. Uh, and then in the second game here, I passed. Uh, and somebody wrote in the comments uh, that, uh, how could I pass in a two-game slate? I must be out of a bankroll. Uh, I don't know really how that makes sense. But uh, no, I didn't pass in this game because I don't have a bankroll. I passed in this game because there was just no edge for me to bet it. Uh, and I'm not going to force out plays. It's about giving out winners. Uh, and that's what I did on yesterday's show is gave out one winner. Uh, if you bought my exclusive premium play in the NBA uh, with the uh, Minnesota Timberwolves. They cashed. Uh, I had the minus six. They won by 10 points. Uh, So a nice winner in the NBA as well yesterday. But we will take a look at the standings and see how everything looks uh, after uh, yesterday's uh, games. Boston first with 95. uh, Florida and second with 94. uh, Toronto with 85. New York Rangers in first with 94 in the Metro, Carolina with 90, Philadelphia with 76. Uh, the top wild card spots, Tampa and Washington, or Tampa with 78, Washington with 75. The Capitals only one point behind Philadelphia for third in the Metro uh, with one game in hand. Uh, so the Capitals are um, starting to play really well at the right time. Uh, Detroit Red Wings, uh, the bubble spot with 74. Islanders with 73. The Buffalo Sabres now four points out of a playoff spot. Of course, they uh, the teams above them have a, a game or two in hand. Uh, but Buffalo, not out of it. Pittsburgh with 69. New Jersey with 68. Uh, and then the bottom three uh, in the Eastern Conference. It's kind of interesting that we don't have a huge drop-off here uh, in the East. Which is, of course, what the NHL wants. A competitive uh, teams here in the central uh nobody played uh yesterday so it is still 91 91 91 Uh, all three teams tied uh with 91 in the pacific vancouver with 92 edmonton with 84 the kings with 79 uh in the wild card spots uh, nashville with 82 uh vegas golden knights with 79 uh st louis blues with 75 minnesota with 74 Uh, Calgary with 71. Seattle, that was a a tough loss for the Kraken uh, in their playoff hopes uh, yesterday. Uh, Then we've got Arizona and then the bottom three in the Western Conference. We'll take a look at what the chat is saying here this morning or this afternoon now. Yo, Terry. Yo, Robert. How's it going? Uh, Let's make some. Let's make some money. Sounds good. Sounds good. What's up, Terry? Let's keep this streak going. Yes, things have been going pretty well lately. Capitals and Sabres, money. Uh, Good job. Good job, Juan. Good job. Can the Caps die already? No. Sorry, Nick. Uh, If anything, it's the Islanders that are dying uh, recently. Uh, Let's go, Buffalo. Yes. Uh, Good day, Terry. Um, To you as well, Captain Bright. Um, Your good afternoon, Terry. Yes. Uh, Parlayed Caps and Sabres. Very nice. Very nice. Um, 
I'm glad I stayed off the Kraken and Sabres game because I probably would have ended up on the Kraken if I played it. So good pass. What's up, Terry? I smash a like. Thank you, Richie. You always do. Uh, good day, Terry. Smash a like. Yes. Thank you. Smash a like. Uh, caps fool everybody. Not me. Not me. Uh, like. Yes. Good afternoon. Uh, Pittsburgh underdogs to the Devils today. Am I missing something? We'll discuss that game, but both teams are kind of in the same boat, really. So I think Devils are favorite because they're at home. Uh, I think that's why uh, Pittsburgh uh, is the underdog. Buffalo team total over two and a half was a cakewalk. Again today, question mark. Well, they do face the Vancouver Canucks, but they are also facing the Smith. So I could see why you'd want to do that. Be on the lookout for college prospects getting signed and junior players and players from uh, Russia as well. Um, but we will jump into today's slate because we got a bunch of games to go over here. Uh, and we will start with this one, uh, which is the Toronto Maple Leafs heading to Philadelphia to face the Flyers. Toronto minus 129 to minus 135. Philadelphia plus 114 to plus 117. Six and a halfs right across the board in this game. Uh, so before we look at how these teams are doing recently, the big news uh, in this game uh, is that uh, Captain Sean Couturier has been scratched uh, and will not play tonight. Uh, and then um, Cam Atkinson also will not play tonight. Uh, and then there's somebody else that I can't remember who it is, but uh, those are the main two. Um, John Tortorella making some scratches here. Um, and, okay, maybe you're trying to send a message to Couturier. Um, you just made him captain a few months ago, and now you're scratching him. Um, that's just, things aren't going well in Philadelphia right now. Uh, and that's uh, that's a sign right there um, with uh, Couturier being scratched. But looking at how these teams are doing, a Toronto 5-2-1 and one in their last eight games. Back-to-back -back games over seven and a half uh, for the Leafs. Uh, Philadelphia has lost three of their last four. Uh, three of their last four games going over six and a half. Uh, Toronto's dominated the Flyers. They've won eight games in a row. Uh, six of the eight games they covered the puck line. Uh, the last seven meetings have all gone over six and a half. So we usually do see very high-scoring games uh, between these two teams. I do heavily lean towards the over. I really do. Uh, I just don't like what's going on in Philadelphia right now. And as I've mentioned on previous shows, I don't really like betting Flyers games uh, because they are a team that I just can't seem to get right. But I do have a player prop here. Uh, I couldn't not take this one. Bobby McMahon, over two and a half shots on goal, plus 125 uh, for him to get three shots on goal. Uh, which he has done in seven of his last eight games and nine of his last 11. Uh, so plus 125, too good of a price for me to pass up. Uh, he's on a line with uh, William Nylander uh, and Max Domi. Uh, Nylander, uh, a goal in three of his last five games, at least three shots on goal in nine of his last 10. Uh, Max Domi has an assist in three of his last five games. Uh, Travis Konechny, um, is the heart and soul for this Flyers team. Uh, point in 10 of his last 12 games and at least three shots and goal in 10 of his last 12 games. And the two players on the same line with Konechny, Owen Tippett, Morgan Frost, both have points in three games in a row. So the offense is mostly coming from that top line for the Flyers. I do lean with the over here. I expect goals, but not pulling the trigger here on this one. We will go up. Dun, 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 dun. Pass. Go Leafs go. Yeah. Uh, passed. Okay. Message is we aren't making the playoffs if we continue this way. Yeah, well, I don't know. I think most people didn't expect this Flyers team to make it anyway. But I can get, I can get sending a message, but scratching your captain when – you need to win these games. Like you, obviously, this is going to be a hard game to win against the Leafs because 
they've dominated the Flyers, but you have to try. And scratching your captain just is an odd way on trying to win a game. Leafs money line. I do agree. Um, if I had to bet aside, things aren't always sunny in Philadelphia. Yeah, definitely not right now. Sammy versus Orson. Thanks for reminding me. I didn't mention goalies. Sammy Orson against Ilya Samsonov in this one. This play will be over six and a half. That's where I'd go if I was betting it. Uh, Leafs money line and puck line and over six and a half. Uh, can't blame you. Justice Annan confirmed for Colorado tonight. Nice, nice. Just one of four going first tens I like today. Santa is coming to town. Oh, there we go. There we go. William Nylander points and shots on goal. Not a bad look. Philly has long-term goals. Yeah, it was never about this year. Um, nobody expected them to do this well. Credit to that has to go to John Tortorella. So I can't give him shit about scratching Sean Couturier because, well, I, I can. But if it wasn't for... Uh, John Tortorella, the Flyers would not be anywhere close to where they are right now. So I guess he is the coach. He makes the decisions. Leafs money line. Best of luck, Timothy. As I said, Flyers games just don't go my way. So I will pass on this one. Uh, but we will move on along to our second game of the night, which is between the Columbus Blue Jackets and the Detroit Red Wings here. Uh, Columbus plus 140 to plus 150. Uh, Detroit minus 160 to minus 170. Six and a half uh, right across the board uh, here in this game. Looking at goaltenders here and see if we have any. James Reimer confirmed for Detroit. Uh, Danil Tarasov, not quite, not quite confirmed, not confirmed yet uh, for uh, Columbus. How are these teams doing recently? Um, well, Columbus, 2-4-1 and one in their last seven games. Two over, three unders, two games finished with six goals. Uh, Detroit has lost eight of their last nine games. That one win against Buffalo. Uh, otherwise, um, they're losing and losing by multiple goals. Three of their last five games over six and a half. Detroit's won four of the last five between these teams. Five overs, one under, one game finished with six goals in the last seven meetings. So we usually do see higher scoring games uh, between these two teams. And that's what I hope happens here is a higher scoring game. Uh, Alex Nylander over two and a half shots on goal. No, that's not the Nylander everyone thinks. Uh, it's uh, William Nylander's brother. Alex Nylander for the Columbus Blue Jackets to get three shots on goal. I am taking that because he's done that in eight of his last 11 games for the Blue Jackets. Didn't get there in his last game, only had two shots. Uh, I think he can get some shots here against the Red Wings. Uh, for Detroit, uh, Shane Goss to spare a point in 11 of his last 13 games, but uh, can't find his point prop, which is a little uh, unfortunate. Uh, it may be available uh, later on. Uh, and then Lucas Raymond um, scored in four games in a row, cashed on him uh, in the last two. Um, so I'm going to continue on here with Lucas Raymond plus 240. Um, it's not like Columbus is a defensive powerhouse or they don't have an elite goalie or anything. So someone can find the score sheet for the Red Wings. Uh, I like Lucas Raymond here, uh, plus 240 in this one. Over six and a half. I agree. Back on the fade the dead wings train. Columbus plus 146 for me. Yeah, I can't get to uh I can't get to a side here. Uh over if Lion, too bad it's Rhymer. Yeah. There we go. Uh Red Wings puck line. I could see it. I could see it. Uh pass inside. Alex Nylander over two and a half shots and goal. Completely agree, Captain Bry. Completely agree. Detroit is a teeter totter. Uh, too many good matchups on the board to make some money. We'll certainly play Raymond anytime goal. Yeah, you don't have to bet in every every game. Now I do have two plays in this game, but that's because both of these guys are playing really well right now. So I'll, I'll back them here. Tailing Raymond anytime goal. Awesome. Let's get it. Um, we will go on along to our next game here, which was. Um, Mentioned earlier already. Uh, Pittsburgh Penguins. Um, I don't know why that 
come up here. Uh, Pittsburgh Penguins minus 105 to plus 105. Uh, New Jersey minus 110 to minus 115. Uh, six and a half right across the board in this one. Uh, taking a look at goaltenders, I believe Jake Allen com- likely for New Jersey. Tristan Jari confirmed for Pittsburgh uh, in this game. How have these teams been doing recently? Uh, Pittsburgh, 2 4 and 1 in their last seven. Uh, New Jersey, 2 and 7 in their last nine. Uh, Pittsburgh has gone over 8.5 in three games in a row. Uh, they've got at least nine goals in their last three games. New Jersey on the other side, uh, one over, four unders, one game finished with six goals. Uh, The Devils have won six games in a row against the Penguins, three overs, one under, two games finished with six goals. And this is my pretty much a pass here. No single plays for me in this one. Um, This game is extremely tough uh, from a side perspective. who cares more in this game? Um, I couldn't tell you. Uh, Jack Hughes uh, did not uh, participate in morning skate. Uh, so all of Twitter, or especially Devils fans, were freaking out. Uh, apparently he is good to go to play tonight. Uh, I don't know if he's dealing with some kind of injury or not, but uh, he will play tonight, uh, just not at morning skate. So there's that. Uh, City Crosby's got an assist in four of his last six games for Pittsburgh. Lars Eller has an assist in three games in a row. Uh, Nico Hishier, a point in eight of his last ten and at least three shots in goal in eight of his last ten. Jack Hughes, a point in eight of his last 11 games. Um, so a couple parlay pieces there, but this game is pretty much a, a pass for me. Uh, no real fe- uh, good feelings about this one. Yeah, same. Thanks for the Raymond reminder. No problem. No problem. Patrick Kane, anytime goal, plus 145. You could look that way. Uh, it's pens or nothing, but I have vowed to not bet the Penguins again this season. Bad spot for New Jersey coming back from West Road, West Coast Road Trip and third game in four days. There you go. There you go. Um, yeah, Nick. Pe- betting the Penguins has not gone well for poor Nick. Penguins and reg, says hockey right wing. All right, we'll see. Please be Jari or versus Kakinen, then over six and a half. Uh, no, it's a uh, Jari versus uh, Allen. Pass, pass, pass. Okay, so the chat is in agreement here. It would be funny if the pens if the pens win. They very well could. It's like a 50-50 toss up for me. Hughes dealing with depression, being out of the playoffs uh, when expected to win the Presidents Trophy. Don't think that's the case, but yeah. Devils players aren't aren't coming to this game with confidence, that's for sure. Uh, a pass. Uh, lean on Penguins' money line. No problem. No problem. Uh, but uh, I am not passing on the next game here, uh, which is between the Winnipeg Jets and the New York Rangers. Um, Winnipeg plus 105 to plus 107. Uh, Rangers minus 119 to minus 125. Uh, five and a halfs. Uh, right across the board uh, here in this game. Uh, how have these teams been doing recently? Uh, Winnipeg, 6-3 and three in their last nine games. One over, four unders, one game finished with six goals. Rangers, 5-1 uh, and one in their last six. Three games in a row over, six and a half. The Rangers, 5-2 and two in the last seven meetings between these teams. Uh, six games in a row under, five and a half. So we usually see low, low, lower scoring games here between these teams, usually with the Rangers uh, finishing on top. And that's where I'm going here. Uh, Rangers, money line, minus 122. Um, I've been cashing puck lines with this Rangers team uh, their last uh, two or three games here. And I'm going to continue to back them, but just take them on the money line here. I think this could be a closer game um, in this one. Winnipeg. Um, six and three in their last nine games, yes. Uh, but um, their two losses were against Nashville and Vancouver. Uh, and then uh, their wins recently, uh, let me bring it up, were against, uh, let me bring it up. I don't know why I can't find it here. Um, okay, I went too far. Uh, their wins were against 
Anaheim and um, I don't know why it's not listed here. I'm sorry, guys, but um, beating weaker opponents but struggling against the better teams. Uh, Rangers, obviously, a very good team. So I'll take them here at home uh, at a good price here in this one. Looking at player props for this one uh, for Winnipeg right now, uh, Kyle Connor, at least three shots on goal in five of his last seven games. Uh, Mark Shifley, a point in seven of his last eight. Uh, Josh Morrissey, who didn't get an assist uh, in the last uh, game, despite Winnipeg scoring six goals, Morrissey unable to find the score sheet. He's got an assist in 10 of his last 15 games. Tyler Toffoli, back-to-back games with two goals. Uh, so Tyler Toffoli is finding it right now. Nikolai Ehlers has an assist in three of his last four games. Uh, Artemi Panarin and Vincent Trocek both have points in 12 of their last 15 games. Chris Kreider a point in six of his last seven. And Adam Fox has a point in eight of his last 10 games for the New York Rangers. Um, we'll go up here. Um, Brat, three plus shots on goal. All right, best of luck. Rangers money line. All right, I like it. I like this matchup. Awesome. Not going to be popular on an island here. Jets plus 105. Um, could be a letdown spot for New York Rangers following a win versus their biggest rival. I don't know. Beating Pittsburgh, um, I don't know. If this was like, if the Rangers were facing, I don't know, um, let's see, St. Louis or something, that could be a letdown spot. It's not a team they really care about. Um, but Winnipeg, maybe not a team they care about, but a very good team. Uh, and I think they'll get up for this game. Under game, uh, lean Rangers. All right, draw, lean Rangers. Pass, great goaltending matchup. Yes, Igor Shosturkin against Connor Hellebuck. A lean Rangers money line in the over, five and a half. Lean under and draw as well. Nice. There we go. There we go. Uh, we will go on along here to the next game, which is between Ottawa Senators and the Boston Bruins. Ottawa plus 185 to plus 201. Uh, the Bruins minus 222 to minus 225. Sixes uh, does look like bet 99 has a six and a half in this game. Um, looking at it here, goaltenders. Um, no, Jonas Corposalo confirmed for Ottawa. Linus Allmark uh, confirmed for Boston. No big surprise. Allmark with the much better numbers, uh, but that really shouldn't surprise anyone. Um, how have these teams done recently? Uh, Ottawa, three and one in their last four games. Back to back games over six and a half. They've gone to overtime in three of their last four games. Boston, four and one in their last five. One over, four unders, two games finished with six goals. Uh, they went to overtime in one of their last two. Boston, six, two, and one in the last nine games between the teams. Three of the last seven going to overtime. So this could be a draw spot. Eight of the last nine games going under five and a half between these teams. I'm just not getting to any single place here in this one. Um, yes, it's pointing towards the draw. And I could see the draw because Ottawa has been scrappy lately. But I could also see uh, Boston smashing the Sens here. So um, no single play for me. Um, player props, there are some good parlay pieces in this one. Brady Kachuk has at least five shots on goal in five of his last six games. Uh, Tim Stutzel has a point in six games in a row. Uh, David Pasternak, a point in eight of his last ten games. Pavel Zaka has a point in seven games in a row. And Brad Marchand, Jake DeBrusque both have points in five of their last seven games. So Boston's top two lines are playing very well right now. Uh, and I could see them taking advantage of this uh, Senators team. Boston or nothing, priced off of it. Agree. Uh, Bruins puck line. All right. I don't have a side, but lean over six and a half. Best of luck. Juan likes Boston in regulation. Minus 140. 
All right. Scary with the draw history, but hey. Uh, Boston typically drags on Mondays. First game after the weekend. Don't know if Tuesdays are different for Boston. Pass. Ottawa, road goal in first 10. So, Odison likes goals early, uh, which I could definitely see. Draw and under 6.5, and, and Kachuk uh, over 4.5 shots in goal, plus 124. Pavel Zaka point. I like it. I like it. Road goal in first 10, Addison. Yes. Um, we will go on along to our next game, which is going to be a very good game. Uh, we've got the Carolina Hurricanes and the New York Islanders here in this one. Carolina minus 152 to minus 170. Islanders plus 135 to plus 145. Sixes right across the board in this one here. Uh, Ilya Sorokin confirmed for the Islanders. I will refresh to see if we have any news. Uh, 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 no, Peter can check off. Not yet confirmed, but listed here. How are these teams doing recently? Uh, Carolina, 6-1 and one in their last seven games. Uh, three of their last five going over 8.5. Uh, Hurricanes games have been going over recently. Um, the Islanders have lost four games in a row. Uh, four of their last six going over 6.5. Uh, the Islanders doing pretty well uh, against um, the Hurricanes lately. Uh, they are 4-1-2. and two. In the last seven meetings, three of the last four going to overtime. So we usually get some close games uh, between these two teams uh, in recent years. All three meetings between the teams this year have gone over six and a half. Give me the over six plus 100 and give me Seth Jarvis anytime goal plus 300 here in this one. Um, why am I taking uh, the over six? Well, because this Carolina team uh, has found some offense here. Uh, they're averaging 4.4 goals over their last seven games. Um, they've been scoring up to five, six, seven goals uh, recently. Uh, and the Islanders uh, have allowed at least four goals in three straight games. Um, why am I not just taking the Carolina team total? Uh, because I believe the Islanders are going to contribute to this over. As I said, they've played the Hurricanes very well. Uh, and I think the Islanders, a desperate team, uh, they're going to put up some goals too. Uh, but I do believe that most of the goal scoring is going to come from Carolina here. Uh, so if you wanted to look at Carolina team total, that's not a bad look uh, here. And this one, uh, player props, Martin, Martin Natchez has at least three shots on goal in 12 of his last 13 games. Um, he's been very consistent. Andrei Svechnikov has a point in six of his last eight games, a goal in four of his last seven. Sebastian Ajo has a point in six of his last nine games. Jake Gensel has a point in three games in a row. Uh, and then Seth Jarvis, a goal in four of his last five games. Uh, so he has been scoring goals lately uh, and is plus 300. Uh, so had to take Seth Jarvis here. Uh, for the Islanders, Matthew Barzell, a point in 15 of his last 18 games, yet has been demoted to the second line. Uh, Bo Horvat, a point in seven of his last nine. Not really going to be looking at too much Islanders props. I would look at the Carolina props. I don't like Barzell being moved to the second line uh, by Patrick Wall. Um, your most consistent offensive player all year, uh, and you're going to replace him with Palmieri, who is, what, 34, 35? Um, not not the best move in my opinion, uh, but what what can you do? I'm not the coach, so he can do as he wishes. Santa, Santa's coming to town. Canes and Reg, Canes money line. Nick, the Islanders fan, is on the Islanders uh, plus one thirty six. Uh, projected them as plus one ten dogs. I don't really know how this Carolina team is playing very well. Very well. Isles, bad penalty kill. Yes, I believe the worst. So in the NHL. Gensel only 10 point, riding until he dries up. Like it. Want to take Panthers puck line, but pass. I think you're talking about Hurricanes. But yeah, all good. Because that's off two points plus 500. He's on power play one. There you go. It will be a one goal game. It very well could be. 
Uh, and that's uh, should help my over. Carolina road goal in first 10, 23 of 33 games this season. I like it. Sorokin is not Vesna form like last year. Not at all. Not at all. Um, Svechikov, two points. Gensel, two points. Can't talk you off it. Panarin, two points. Plus 190. Kyle's expected goals against have been actually pretty good lately. Less than two and a half expected goals against in any of their last nine games. Look for positive regression from the Isles defensively. Maybe. But against this offense, um, maybe we'll see it uh, in the future. Uh, Kreider goal, plus 160. All right. John Gabriel Pedro, nope. Uh, not sure why you're bringing him up, but okay. Alternate over six and a half is plus 120. There we go. You could definitely go with that. Uh, I like the six number because of the chance of a push instead of a loss. So, but hey, feel free to take the over six and a half. Oops, Doc Gaines. Yeah. Hey, it's all good. It's all good. Um, but we will move on along to our next one here, which is between two complete opposites um, here in this one, uh, between the San Jose Sharks, plus 310 to plus 350, heading to Nashville, minus 400 to minus 450. Sixes right across the board here in this game. Who thought at the beginning of the season that we were going to see Nashville at minus 400? Uh, I would not have been one of them to guess that. Um, at this game here, UC Soros likely for Nashville. Nobody yet confirmed for uh, San Jose. Uh, how have these teams been doing recently? Well, as I said, complete opposites. Uh, San Jose has lost 13 of their last 14 games. Nashville has won 12 of their last 14. The two games they lost were in overtime. San Jose... 5-2-1 to a total of 6, so 5 overs, 2 unders, 1 game, finished with 6 goals. Nashville, 2 overs, 2 unders, 2 games, finished with 6 goals. Nashville absolutely dominating the Sharks for a long time now. 11-0-1 in the last 12 games between the teams. They covered the puck line, minus 1.5, and, and 9 of the 11 wins. 1 over, no unders, 2 games, finished with 6 goals in the last three meetings. Unfortunately here, uh, I was planning on taking the Preds puck line here in this game before checking the odds, uh, before the lines opened. And to see the Preds minus one and a half being minus 160 now, it was around minus 140, minus 150 last night. First of all, we all know, or for new people on the show that don't know, uh, my cutoff is minus 135. Uh, I went to minus 139 once uh, this season, uh, but minus 135 is my cutoff. For puck lines, it's like minus 120, uh, and I'd have to have a good reason to play that. Uh, if this was minus 120 for the puck line, I would take it for the Preds, but at minus 160, it's just, uh, it's just too much uh, for me to take. However, there is a plus money player prop here in this one. And if you've been watching the show, uh, you've heard me mention Tommy Novak before. Uh, his point prop, so to get a goal or an assist, is plus 100 here in this game. Uh, he has a point in four of his last five games and 15 of his last 19. So he's been extremely consistent, especially recently. Uh, but overall, facing this San Jose Sharks defense slash goaltending, I expect the Preds to kick butt here in this one. Uh, so I'll take Novak, Tommy Novak, to get a point at plus 100. Uh, I was really surprised. I expected this to be minus 130. So I was shocked to get plus 100 for this one. Uh, for the Sharks, uh, Mikhail Granlund, a point in six of his last eight games, facing his former team. So maybe if you think the Sharks are going to do something, uh, you could look at Mikhail Granlund. Uh, Fabian Zetterlund, a point in five of his last seven games. And for the Predators, Roman Yossi. A point in nine of his last 11. Philip Forsberg, a point in 10 of his last 11. Gustav Nyquist, a point in eight of his last 11. Ryan O'Reilly, a point in seven of his last 10. Mentioned Tommy Novak already. Mark Jankowski has an assist in four of his last five games. Fortunately, Jankowski props aren't available except for a goal. 
uh, which I wouldn't take because he's assisting. So it's hoping to maybe see an assist prop for him, but no, uh, it didn't happen. We will, one of my only plays tonight, Nashville minus two. Interesting. Okay. Um, San Jose, Nashville over six, minus 110. Should have been a six and a half. Lean Sharks plus two and a half. Team total over two and a half. But we'll stick with the over six. Okay. Roman, you'll see two points plus 250. All right. Chat, let us know if you have information about San Jose at karaoke last night in Nashville. Hey, it's possible. Preds minus two and a half. The alternative puck line for Captain Bry plus 130. I could see it. I could see it. Nashville minus two, if any different than Nashville puck line, if you think about it, in my opinion. Well, it is different because if they do win by two, it's a push. So it is a little bit different, in my opinion, but I could be mistaken. No problem. Lean second period puck line minus a half, minus 116. Interesting, second period. Um, but we will move on along to our next game here, which is between the Colorado Avalanche and the St. Louis Blues. Colorado minus 204 to minus 225. St. Louis plus 180 to plus 187. Six and a halfs right across the board in this game. I'm taking a look at goaltenders. Uh, Jordan Bennington confirmed for St. Louis. Justice Annanen uh, likely for Colorado. Um, yes, Annanen's only played in um, seven games, or at least his record is seven games. But he's got better numbers than Jordan Bennington so far this year. However, Bennington has played a lot more games, so something to look at. Um, how these teams been doing recently? Colorado, 8-1 and one in their last nine games. They've gone to overtime in three of their last four, uh, but they are finding ways to win. Uh, three of their last five going over, six and a half. The Blues? Have won four games in a row. Uh, no overs, four unders, two games finished with six goals. No big surprise, the Colorado Avalanche have do very well against the Blues. Five and one in the last six meetings. One over, six unders, one game finished with six goals. So the Blues trending towards the under right now because they have been getting some good goaltending. Uh, and uh, previous history stats go towards the under here in this one. For me, both players didn't score in their last game, but I'm going to go right back to them here. Um, yes, the Blues goaltending has been good. Defense has been good. But um, this is a very high-powered offense that the Blues are going to face here. Uh, McKinnon, anytime goal, plus 100, uh, which I got earlier. I was shocked to get that at plus money. And Valerie Nishushkin, uh, plus 155, anytime goal here. Why am I taking these? Well, McKinnon's got a goal in seven of his last nine games. At least four shots on goal in 16 of his last 19, and a point in 15 games in a row. Uh, Valerie Nishushkin, a goal in five of his last seven. He has four shots on goal in eight of his last 10. Mikko Rantanen, an assist in 11 of his last 12 games, 13 of his last 16. Kel McCarr, an assist in eight of his last 10. And for the Blues right now, Robert Thomas, a point in three of his last four. Uh, he's starting to heat up again. Um, Mostly an assist guy, but lately he's been scoring goals now. So um, Robert Thomas, he could look out for the Blues here. Um, but I like the Avalanche to win this game. Obviously don't like the price. So I'll take McKinnon and Nishushkin anytime goals here in this one. Uh, da -da -da -da. Avs puck line. All right, all right. Blues plus 180. Lean draw. Yep, Nick needs Blues to win for his uh, Blues to make the playoffs future. Blues plus one and a half. Uh, Jordan Bennington, um, not focusing on the game tonight. Instead, uh, in the chat here, it says Blues money line. Go and bet Blues money line, Mr. Bennington, so we can get you kicked out of the league. Sounds great to me. Ranton in anytime goal, plus 110. Interesting, interesting. Bennington for Vesna. Yeah, when hell freezes is over. Uh, I'm kidding, guys. Not a Blues fan, but shouldn't surprise anybody. As win in regulation, sprinkle the puck line. I like it. Sharks have 16 wins this season and are not jockeying for playoff seating. Exactly. Blues reveal their true colors tonight versus a real format. I agree. I agree. Uh, yes, sir. 
Uh, Mim says Blues Bunny Line. Hey, they are a big dog and they have done well at home, uh, especially as a dog. Um, and they've won four in a row. So I cannot blame anyone for taking the Blues. Um, this is a really, this is a huge game. If the Blues come out here and win this game in regulation, um, then maybe watch out for the Blues. But if they come here and get their asses handed to them, well, then they can beat bad teams, but not really good teams. Uh, thanks to the 99 viewers watching. Uh, appreciate you all. Uh, but we'll move on along to our next game here, which is Montreal Canadiens and the Edmonton Oilers. Uh, Montreal plus 300 to plus 350. Edmonton minus 385 to minus 450. Six and a halfs uh, right across the board in this game here. Samuel Montembeau confirmed for Montreal. Calvin Pickard uh, confirmed for Edmonton in this one. How are these teams doing recently? Uh, Montreal, one, three, and one in their last five games. Four of their last five going under, five and a half. Edmonton, two, one, and two in their last five. Three of their last four going under, five and a half. Edmonton, five and two in the last seven meetings between these teams, seven of the last eight going over six and a half. So usually we do see fireworks when these two teams face each other. Um, no single plays here for me in this one. Um, just no props that I really want to pull the trigger on uh, singly here. Uh, looking at parlay pieces, Cole Caulfield, uh, an assist in five of his last eight. At least four shots on goal in 13 of his last 15. Uh, so Cole Caulfield is shooting the puck. Uh, Uri Slavkovsky has a point in four games in a row. Uh, Alex Newhook, a point in six of his last nine. Connor McDavid did not get a single point in his last game, uh, which is rare. Uh, he's got an assist in 15 of his last 17 games. Leon Dreisaitl, a point in six of his last eight. Evan Bouchard has an assist uh, in three games in a row for the Edmonton Oilers in this one. If you will go to the chat. Uh, the line is priced accordingly. All right. The line hasn't budged a bit. Interesting. Uh, maybe it's an over six and a half. I could see that. Avs 9-1 exact score plus uh, 100,000. There you go. I wouldn't mind seeing that happen. Uh, if any minus 400 loses today, it's the Oilers, in my opinion. I can see that. 6-1? Well, I don't know if I should say I can see that because Montreal is just not playing well, but I'm not betting on Edmonton, so there you go. 6-1. All right. Canes, New Jersey's are fire. I haven't seen them, but okay. It's the Kings at Earl Sports Beds. We'll talk about them very soon. Pass. All right. Avs money line. Have to be a parlay piece, but yeah, pass. Uh, sweaters, Owen. Uh, smile face. Uh, what about Hyman or Connor? Anytime goal. Um, well, Hyman, um, nothing in three games in a row or back to back games. Um, Hyman, we made money on him earlier in the year, but now he's a little bit more inconsistent. So you can pull the trigger on him if you'd like, but uh, I didn't. I did not. But we will move on along to our next one. We've got three more games after this one and then the parlay of the day. Uh, we've got the Chicago Blackhawks heading to L.A. to face the Kings. Chicago plus 300 to plus 325. L.A. minus 380 to minus 400. Five and a halfs right across the board in this one. Uh, da -da -da -da. I don't believe we have any goaltenders for the remaining games. We do not. So, um, for Chicago betters, you better hope it's Peter Mrazek uh, if you're betting Chicago. Because when these two teams faced each other a few days ago, I took Chicago plus one and a half. Uh, and um, Soderblom did what Soderblom does. Uh, and the Kings beat them up. But... Chicago plus 300 to plus 325, LA minus 380 to minus 400, five and a half right across the board. Um, how are these teams doing recently? Chicago has won four of their last six games. They're in four, they're four and two. However, they've all been bums that the Blackhawks have beat. 
for their last six games, going over six and a half. LA five, five and one in their last 11, five games in a row under five and a half. Uh, LA 5 0 and 1 in the last six games between these teams, five in a row going under five and a half. No single plays here. Uh, again, um, I'm not taking the Kings on the puck line here in this one. Um, but I don't know if Chicago can really compete here with the Kings in this one either. Um, as I said, Bedard and company have been lighting up bad teams, but against good teams lately, uh, nothing. So I would lean with the under five and a half, um, but would have to know who's in net for Chicago first before even considering pulling the trigger. Uh, Connor Bedard, a point in four of his last six games, at least three shots in goal in five games in a row. Tyler Johnson, a point in five of his last six. Was looking for Johnson props, but didn't see any lately. Uh, we'll see uh, earlier. We'll see if they do become available. That'll be nice plus money on the top line with Bedard and Kurashev. Uh, I might pull the trigger on that again. Was on it in uh, the last game. Philip Kurashev a point in four of his last six games. And for the Kings right now, only Adrian Kempe a uh, point in three of his last four games has been consistent. Um, I'll jump into the chat. Uh, I can't bring myself to call them sweaters. LOL, they're jerseys. I agree. I'm in plus 25, plus 105, anytime at goal. Anytime goal at home. Let's go. Best of luck. Evander Kane, anytime goal, plus 240. Hawks plus two and a half or pass. Um, smiley face. Tommy, a Blackhawks fan. Uh, Blackhawks team total under one and a half, plus 132. Interesting. Agreed. Hawks plus two and a half or pass. Chicago has won 19 games so far this season. Yeah, therefore pass. Agree, Captain Brian. Uh, 19 games. Lean Bedard money line. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, hey, if Chicago is going to win, then Bedard is going to have to do something. So you can just, yeah, call it Bedard money line because that's basically the whole team is Connor Bedard anyway. So there you go. Kempe and Kopitar anytime point parlay. All right. Kempe goal plus 140. I noticed that some of the schedules will favor the Blackhawks. Interesting. Interesting. And they're starting to win games lately, like I said. But, and hey, as a Wild fan, and if you watched my predictions for the playoffs in the Western Conference, LA is definitely vulnerable uh, to being caught by Minnesota. Or if St. Louis can surprise, then maybe St. Louis. LA is vulnerable. So losing this game would be incredibly bad for the Kings uh, if they lose this game. Kings play playoff defense. Yeah. Uh, Denver Nuggets money line, Kings and Reg Parlay, minus 106 on DK. Thank you for the show, Terry, and good luck, y'all. No problem, Stop Gio. Thanks for coming on in. Um, Denver Nuggets money line. Uh, they do have the definite, definite uh, spot advantage against the Timberwolves. Didn't pull the trigger in NBA today. Uh, nothing that caught my eye. Um, but moving on along to our next one here, which is between the Tampa Bay Lightning and the Vegas Gold Knights. Uh, Tampa Bay plus 115 to plus 120. Vegas Gold Knights minus 133 to minus 135. Six and a halfs right across the board in this one. This is my Picks and Parlays exclusive play of the day. So you can get it up on picksandparlays.net in the description below. $25 for the play. If it loses, get your money back as store credit. If you're interested in purchasing that, it is over on the site. Um, my exclusive premium play of the day. Looking at player props, Braden Point, a point in 11 of his last 13 games, a goal in eight of his last 12. Nikita Kutrov, a point in 20 of his last 21 games, a Mr. Consistency. Uh, Brandon Hagel, a point in 17 of his last 20. Jack Eichel has at least three shots on goal in 12 of his last 13 games. And Chandler Stevenson has an assist in four of his last six games for the Vegas Golden Knights in this one. Hawks money line, Bedard anytime goal, parlay is plus 2,500. Leave it here. There we go. Nice, Geo. Great spot for the Nugs. It is. Plus 750. The plus 25 is, oh, okay. First, oh, okay. That makes sense. Lean lightning money line. All right. 
Kucherov anytime point, parlay piece, especially versus Hill. Yeah, um, I agree. But we'll move on to the second last game of the night, which is between the Minnesota Wild and the Anaheim Ducks here in this game. Minnesota minus 215 to minus 225. Anaheim plus 180 to plus 191. Uh, sixes and five and a halfs uh, available here in this game. I will recheck the goaltenders here just to see. No, nope, nobody confirmed yet. And I would expect this to be uh, Philip Gustafson uh, starting tonight. Um, the Wild play the Kings tomorrow uh, and Flurry, the better goaltender lately. Uh, I would think that the Wild would save um, Flurry for tomorrow. Uh, but we'll have to see what uh, John Hines decides to do here in this one. How are these teams doing recently? Uh, the Wild, 5 0 oh, 2 in their last seven games, uh, four of their last five going under. Five and a half. Uh, Anaheim has lost six games in a row. Um, three overs, one under, two games finished with six goals. Um, the Ducks have um, scored two or less goals in all six games, and they've allowed four or more in five of their last seven, seven games, uh, losing all of their last six games by multiple goals. Uh, Minnesota, 14 and one. In the last 15 games between these teams, covering the puck line in four of the last five games, four of the last five going under five and a half. Didn't pull the trigger on the wild puck line against the Ducks when they were in Minnesota, but I will pull the trigger here on the puck line for them today. Uh, plus 120 here. Um, the Wild own the Ducks. Uh, the Wild have to win this game. The Ducks are losing by multiple goals every game. They're giving up at least four, only scoring two or less. Uh, I like the Wild to get the job done here, cover the puck line. And, of course, I'm on Kirill Kaprizov, anytime goal. The hottest goal scorer in the NHL um, with the most goals since the All-Star break, and he continues to produce a goal in six of his last seven games, a point in seven games in a row for the Wild. But he's not getting much help. Um, he's kind of a one-man show right now uh, because he's not getting a whole lot of help from others. Um, but that being the case, I still uh, like the wild puck line here. If others are going to show up, uh, it should be here against the Ducks. Hopefully it's John Gibson uh, and the Wild don't have to face Lucas Dostal again. Uh, but if they have to, that's fine as well. Uh, Kaprizov anytime goal. If you were looking for a Ducks prop, uh, Frank Vetrano has at least five shots in goal in four of his last five games. Uh, so Frank for Toronto shot prop is a good look here. He has been shooting the puck a ton for um, the Anaheim Ducks. Dun, 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 dun. Vegas minus 135. Have this game projected at minus 160. Interesting. Against Tampa Bay? Okay. Lean Vegas? All right. I'm ready for the MLB show. Yes. Thanks for reminding me to mention it. 6 p.m. Eastern tonight, uh, the MLB show for tomorrow's 6 a.m. game. So uh, that's back-to-back uh, -back days, Wednesday, Thursday, 6 a.m. games uh, for Dodgers and the Padres. So stay tuned. Wild puck line and Capri's off anytime call. Completely agree with you, Captain Bry. Pass not trusting many is minus 225 road faves. No interest in Anaheim. All right. Wild puck line, plus 115. Let's go. I like it. Uh, Ice X says Ducks and Reich. Good luck. Uh, goal in first 10. All right. Well, hello, Ice X. Hello. Vegas money line in the last game. No Eric Sinek really sucks, especially if Hartsey continues to bender, take better penalties. He'd been so good with no penalties previous um, – previously so we'll see how he plays but yeah no eric Sinek does hurt he sh might be joining the wild tomorrow against the duck or against the kings also kings on second night of a back-to-back -to -back tomorrow something we'll mention in tomorrow's show i'm kidding about ducks and reg if terry saw what i bet on he knows i'm joking i have not seen your bets today so ducks puck line says owen oh 
There you go. Wild Money Line plus Kaprizov goals plus 140. Uh, of course, I like that. Uh, Owen Effort, uh, at Owen Effort, uh, eyes. Yeah, there you go. Wild Puck Line plus 115, Boldy Goal, Kaprizov four points plus 900. Same game parlay plus 1900. Kaprizov four points? Wow. Okay. Interesting. Um, Minnesota team total uh, power plays minus 157. Um, our power play point. Oh, team power play point. Okay. So someone has to get a power play point for the wild. I like that. Don't like the price minus 157, but I like that's an interesting bet. I like that. Caprice off anytime goal minus 104. Shop around if you can. Uh, I did get minus one or plus 115. Blame Robert. Uh, laughing face. I will. I will. Okay. By the way, got lightning Vegas over six and a half. All right. Minnesota only wins tonight if they get depth scoring or Kirill Kaprizov puts up four. Wake up Felino, wake up Boldy, wake up Chisholm, Faber, Goudreau. Well, Chisholm is a young defenseman that Winnipeg um, threw, threw out like garbage uh, and the Wild picked him up in waiver. So I'm not expecting him to come out here with offense. That's not necessarily his job, but I'd like to see it. I thought we were going to go Ducks just to get Terry riled up. Hey, if you guys want to put your money in the Ducks, that's totally up to you. Um, I'm not going to recommend it, but hey, um, if that's what you want to do, then go for it. But uh, we will jump into the final game of the night and then get to the parlay of the day. Um, Buffalo Sabres heading to Vancouver to face the Canucks. Buffalo plus 164 to plus 173. Vancouver minus 192 to minus 200 sixes right across the board. It looks like there is a six and a half uh, available in this game. How are these teams doing recently? Buffalo four, three and one in their last eight games coming off a nice win against the Kraken last night, three of their last five going under five and a half Vancouver four, one and one in their last six, five of their last six games going under five and a half Vancouver five, two and one in the last eight meetings. Six overs, two unders, one game finished with six goals. And no single plays here for me in the final game of the night. Um, I don't want to take a side here. Uh, I think Vancouver probably wins, but they're huge favorites. I would have to go with uh I would have to go with in regulation, which is probably around minus 130, which I'm just not interested in doing here. Uh, looking at player props, Tage Thompson has a point in four of his last five games, at least three shots on goal in 14 of his last 16. JT Miller, a point in 10 of his last 12 for the Canucks. Elias Pettersson, a point in three of his last five. Niels Hoaglander, a point in four of his last six. Uh, and then uh, Quinn Hughes has a point in five of his last six games for the Canucks. I do like Quinn Hughes uh, as a parlay piece here in this one. Uh, da, 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 da. The Ducks suck. Yeah, they they, re they really, really do. Uh, Ducks minus one or pass. Pass. Is anyone taking the Senators today? I honestly lean the but pass. Nope. Bruins puck line. Vancouver money line in reg. Uh, Canucks puck line or Canucks money line parlay piece. Uh, pass. Sabres money line. Besser goal plus 140. Lean the over six and a half and Vancouver team total goal if Levi should be UPL given that Buffalo won last night. Hughes anytime assists auto play. Yeah, I yeah, I don't think they would put uh actually you know what? I shouldn't say that. I was gonna say I don't think they would put uh, Uka Pekalukanin in again. But what happened when um Devin Levi played well last year? Um, he got run into the ground, started every game, and then got sent down to the AHL. So maybe because Uka Pekka Lukanen is playing well, um, Sabres are just going to continue to play him. So I would make sure to check goaltenders here because uh, Devin Levi could not play. It would not shock me to see them play Uka Pekka Lukanen again. Goalie situation is interesting. I agree. Let's go Red Wings and Avs. Okay, so that's uh, Robert's parlay of the day. Uh, lean Buffalo team total. All right. And for today's parlay of the day, lots to choose from, obviously, with 13 games. 
Uh, but I've settled here on this one. Uh, we're going Pavel Zaka over half a point, parlayed with Andrei Svechnikov over half a point, plus 189. I got it for earlier at uh, BetMGM. Reason for this, well, Pavel Zaka, a point in seven games in a row. Uh, he's been playing very well recently, obviously plays with David Pasternak. Pretty decent price for him to get a point. I think it's minus 130. Uh, so if you wanted to play that singly, I want to talk you off that. And then Andrei Svechnikov um, got sent to the second line, but I'm saying got sent and not demoted because uh, it's really not much of a, uh, a downgrade uh, playing with Kuznetsov and Marty Natchez on the second line. Uh, Carolina's top line, Gensel, Sebastian Ajo, and Seth Jarvis. As I mentioned in the earlier part of the show, uh, Seth Jarvis plus 300 anytime goal, and he's on the top line, which is crazy. Uh, I completely forgot he was on the top line. So Svechnikov point, Pavel Zaka point, plus 189 for today's parlay of the day. We will see what everyone is thinking here. I have a 64% profit boost on DK. What money line should I put it on? I can't decide. Um, I'm not sure. <laughs> Isles money line. Uh, Y'all choose for me. Um, F it. Well, I don't think you're doing Isles money line, but maybe that. Or that's me, Nick. Yeah, of course he's not going to go uh, Isles money line. Not Isles. We're going Ducks money line. Owen. Owen. Owen, no, don't. Yes, I agree with Robert. Um, honestly, I would do Rangers. I would do the Rangers. Uh, but that's just my opinion. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Hit the like and subscribe button if you're new. Uh, baseball show later tonight, 6 p.m. Eastern, going over the one MLB game for tomorrow. Premium play, as I said, in the Vegas Tampa game. You can get that on picksandparlays.net in the description below. If you like the stats I gave out, if you want to see them with your eyes, they are in the spreadsheet, which is also in the description below. Um, player prop stats and um, team stats all in the uh, description are in the uh, spreadsheet, which is in the description below. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Best of luck on your bets tonight, and uh, we'll see you on the next show tomorrow, discussing a three-game slate. Thanks for watching, everyone. Best of luck.